When we got married in church 10 years ago, we were aware that we were saying our vows before God. But I think that the deeper sentiment of it was maybe a bit lost along the way. Stars overhead turn my head and I caught you by eye for the first time. And our first daughter, Caitlin, was born two years after we got married. Just before she was born, Mervyn set up his new business. I felt I had to give my everything so that the business doesn't close. And I put all my needs ahead of everything else. I would hide out at the balcony to smoke very often. I might have gone to like 12 or 15 or sometimes one whole pack. In a sense, it was my escape, but it was also the time where I needed to think and plan. At that point in my life, I was struggling and lonely. It didn't feel like what I felt or my problems were being seen or heard. And I think when I tried to speak to Mervyn, he had a very different outlook. And I think he had a very different expectation of parenting, of maybe marriage. Every time she needed to unload because of all the weight that she has been carrying, it would always turn out to be a three, four hour argument. In my mind, I'm thinking like this is all in her mind. Kind of push the responsibility back to her. I have something called polycystic ovarian syndrome. This makes it very difficult to get pregnant in the first place. I also have a difficulty in staying pregnant. Over the course of these 10 years, we've had six miscarriages. Each loss just made me feel less of a woman, less of a mother, because I feel like it's my fault that I cannot carry this child to term. I wondered why we had to go through this, but I had to be strong for her. I had to make sure that she didn't feel alone. We're in it together. It's not her fault. In 2019, we had a major shift in our marriage. We went to this retreat conducted by Archbishop William Go. By dinner on the first day, Archbishop actually said something. He felt like he was speaking to me about smoking, about our vices and about family. After the talk, I went down. I decided, this is it. God, help me. I surrender to you. So I took that pack of cigarettes and threw it in the dustbin. And that was the first case of trusting God totally and surrendering to Him. One of the nights during the retreat, I was just given this vision. I felt like... Jesus had brought me to heaven, like, as if I was physically there. And he says to me, Look, there are your children. And I see my children playing in the field. And they come towards us. And in that moment, they surround me and they embrace me. And I'm just overcome with so much emotion at that time. I can feel them telling me, Mummy, it's okay, we're okay. And we're happy, and don't be angry with yourself. Then I told Mervyn about it. We cried and he was happy that I had that experience. It was healing, I think. It was healing to, to be able to see our children. It started with you. God, I ask from you the assistance I need to be a good husband and father. Help me to love and care for my children and give them the best possible example of Christian life. Help me to be a good wife and mother. Help me also to give myself totally to my children. 
even to the point of stepping aside when they must walk alone. Help me never to take my wife for granted or forget that she needs to be loved. May I never fail to give my husband the encouragement and the support he needs. My dear wife. My dear husband. I praise and thank Almighty God for having united us in holy matrimony. In the presence of God and His people, I now renew my promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, I will love you and honour you all the days of my life. What they say is right, when you put God in the centre of your life, everything just flows. As we celebrate our 10th anniversary, how great God's grace is to gift us another child, a son. Love is not just a feeling, it is very much a decision. And we are so blessed to be more in love than ever now. <laughs>